in the last week, a ton of questions have come in asking about any stories you would have or any involvement you may have had in the past with Herb Abrams. Anything that you ever <laughs> meet him? No, I never met him, never saw him in person. I, I was like everybody else. I was hearing these stories from afar. And yeah, it, yeah I, he came along, what was it? Was it about a year before or about a year after that idiot in Chicago? With no, the AWF. No, no, he was well before that. Was Herb he Abrams before came that? around in 1990. Paul Alperstein came around, I want to say, either late 94 or early 95. Okay, well, well, that guy, for the fo folks who don't know, that guy started a promotion where he decided he was going to look major league, he was going to tape his television, and he was going to have a big crowd because he was going to pay the fans to come in and be his audience for his television taping. So he paid a thousand people fifty bucks a piece, and to this day, it is the largest negative house ever in wrestling. Now, people of these big companies, they've lost more money on a show, but not on actually just a gate. It was negative fifty thousand dollars. We paid the fans fifty grand to be there, and I mean, you know, it, I I could tell as ever, the guys get in these things hoping, oh my gosh, you know, and I'm sure he was you know, very charming and personable. And he convinced these people he was going to do these things, but it, uh, I, I don't know why they always believe it. The guys do. And it's wishful thinking as Joe Coff used to say, smoking the hopium, but it's right there in front of you. This idiot is not going to do this. He's not going to fucking kick Vince McMahon's ass. I would have thought it would have been a fucking red flag when he, you know, announced his booker who was in prison and his top star who was dead. But nobody lets that get in the way of they think, oh, this is going to be great. And then, but I mean, he did have the most spectacular flame out ever in history. And that's the best line that Brian Blair has ever uttered on television in his wrestling career was on Dark Side of the Ring when he said, say what you want about Herb Abrams, but he died doing what he loved, cocaine and hookers. That's pretty much all you can say. No, I, I mean, I knew from the start of it. I, I, every once in a while, I will get flummoxed or fooled by one of these people for a little while, but I, I knew as soon as I heard about it, this was going to be an abortion, Herb Abrams. I knew the AWF thing. I knew that, remember the thing they did at the Cow Palace, supposed to be the world's biggest wrestling and MMA convention at the Cow Palace in San Francisco about 10 years ago? Yeah, that's still one of the best. Yeah, yeah, and well, that's what me and the Midnight Express we had just been doing reunions at that point, and the guy had contacted me. I didn't know what his name, or I didn't know him. I, he left his name, but I didn't know him, and I wasn't going to go to San Francisco, so I didn't get back with him. But Dennis Condry called me and said, hey, they want us in San Francisco really bad. I said, well, good luck. Get your money up front. And they were going to go, and then I think they thought better of it at the last minute or whatever, but, you know, no, these things are not just going to pop up and happen. That's why, and and it's almost detrimental when people hear about it. The first thing that a lot of these companies want to do is big publicity about, yeah, we're going to start up and we're going to do this and that. That's why Smoky Mountain Wrestling was a surprise to everybody until it actually showed up on television practically. That's why nobody knew anything about the Sinclair deal to buy Ring of Honor until it was announced. Big, you, because... So many times, so many goofs in this business have come along with too much money and not enough sense and announced they were going to start the biggest wrestling promotion of all time. And then they started out and it fucking sucks, which is what mostly happens. So, uh, you know, I don't think you should build up a lot of false hope. Try to sneak in under the radar and deliver a nice product.